Um, this uh, event was conceived by uh, Kelly Bennett in 2011. We've tried to institutionalize a lot of her charisma. Uh, through this, I am nowhere near as graceful or cultural as she is. Um, so, but she did introduce me to our next speaker, Jennifer Luce. Um, Jen, of course, designed uh, new things like the KPBS newsroom, which is just gorgeous. Someday. Uh, she designed, uh, of course, the extraordinary desserts in Little Italy. She um, uh, loose locked, and uh, we've used it for many uh, events. And she's uh, she was actually a speaker at our first meeting of minds in 2011. And I am honored. Uh, she's of course designed many spaces that have won many awards, and I'm honored that she can bring us home tonight, uh, Jennifer. Bruce. had quite an adventure uh, preparing for you tonight. We just recently had the opportunity to experience a really secret space in San Diego. And uh, we really needed to delve deeper into why it moved us and why does architecture move us so much. So um, we did a little research. So this is a sentimental journey down a path of history. Uh, Salk Institute, Louis Kahn, Jonas Salk, and the idea of um, the tiny little studies that sit at the top of the towers. We call them ashrams, it's a word that I just really learned recently, um, which are spiritual retreats, ermitage, the secluded dwellings. At the time that Kahn was designing Salk, he was also traveling through Greece, um, at a place called Delphi and, and studying the temples of the place and the very sacred spaces of meditation and prayer. Here you see uh, the Torrey Pines Mesa in 1958 before Salk, before really UCSD. And I, I think of the same image as Salk's sketch that this was his Delphi, this was his temple. Just a really remarkable resemblance between the two places. So Salk has built, um, it's Khan's Delphi, it's, uh, Salk also spent some time on a sabbatical in Assisi, uh, studying the monastic cells of the place, of, of where the monks would pray and meditate. And I really believe, and I think we've come to the conclusion, that both of those places um, played such a role in the evolution of Salk and particularly the studies that sit at the top of the towers you're seeing now that are being, are being built in 1960 at this point. This is a sketch by Salk of those towers. Um, it really shows the power of the sketch to visualize. Um, hopefully architects do more of this, even though we have digital means by which we express ourselves. Um, it's an intellectual retreat at the top of the tower. It's a monastic campus and a place where we meld science, human study, humanity, study, art, and philosophy. Just an incredible place. In 1962, Watson shared the Nobel Prize for DNA and called um, Salk the Mecca of science. So these little tiny studies, as you see in yellow, sit at the very top of the building. They're really private places. You have to cross a bridge to get to them. They're very, very intimate, and they're secret. No one really goes there other than these very senior scientists. And we had the wonderful opportunity to recently visit one of them. Here's the floor plan, and in yellow you see two paired studies, uh, which are occupied by senior staff. And they're places, they're lofts, they're up in the sky, they're so inspiring. They're places where you can meditate, where you can listen to music, where you can even take a nap. And we, we look back to the influences that we think Khan really had while he was designing these. And these are two spaces. Uh, one on the right is Exeter Library. On the left is a house that Khan designed in Pennsylvania. And he was always finding these little tiny intimate spaces to be alone. 
We also think that he was influenced by Le Corbusier and La Tourette, which is this is beautiful monastery in France. And the top line of little windows you see are the monastic cells. They're very, very intimate, um, secret, private. They have balconies. These are the hallways that lead to those cells. There's this sort of breathing space between praying and being in the church and coming to your own private space of meditation. And in, and in the same way at Salk, he prepares us to go to those spaces with these long hallways and tiny stairs and bridges. I mean, it's almost the identical experience of really taking yourself away from the world of work, the world of science, to the world of your head. And it's just a fantastic experience to actually climb the stair and prepare to open the door. At La Tourette, this is the monastic cell. It's a tiny space with a bed, a desk, and an incredible view. The whole building is, is um, set in an incredible natural um, setting, and, and so is Salk. I mean, think about the view of the ocean. So this is uh, an image of one of the studies at Salk, this intense sense of light, amazing lofty space, a view of the ocean, a view of the beautiful courtyard below, but an idea of privacy and intimacy. I mean, we talked to many scientists about how they use the space, and they, they not only have maps and read and do not bring their computers there, but they also entertain there, they have dinners, and it's just an, a remarkable experience. Here's a view outside, um, looking down to the courtyard from one of these um, very special places. We um, had the opportunity to find this space, which is being restored at this very moment uh, to its original condition. The materials are simple, Burmese teak on the window, Oak, which we're imagining comes from Pennsylvania, where Kahn was from, and poured concrete. Very, very simple. The architectural details allow your mind to wander. Um, door handles, window frames, edgeless glass, and these beautiful shutters that allow you to modulate the light in the space depending on your mood. Really quite remarkable and astounding. And then there are the small, tiny details of personal life. Each scientist has brought his own or his or her own artwork into the spaces, library systems. And, and it's just a way to really, really express yourselves personally at the same time as being kind of in this church. So the last slide is, I know we're not supposed to talk about one of our own projects, but we have been asked to design a workspace desk for one of the scientists who happens to be the, um, the chair of faculty. And I have to say, after experiencing the wonder of this these tiny spaces, it's, it's quite a humbling um, act to, to really think about how one would fill that space with something of character and meaning and memory. And these are the places that become so special to us in our city. Um, this one being particularly private, but I encourage everybody to go find these kind of places in our city because they exist. I really, truly believe that. Thank you.